Hello, this is Haley McLaughlin with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. We, in conjunction with Metro East Community Media, are here to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Ben Bowman, running for State Senate District 18. Welcome, Ben. Thank you so much, Haley. It's good to be with you. Absolutely. Ben, please tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're running for this office. Sure. Uh, so my name is Ben Bowman. I live in Tigard, Oregon, and I serve on the Tigard Twalton School Board, and I'm an education advocate. Um, I'm running for the Oregon State Senate in District 18 because I believe we need to change the culture of the State Senate. Uh, and, you know, I think with the coronavirus crisis that we're living through right now, we kind of have two choices uh, because we're going to come through the other side of this thing and we're going to have to rebuild our state. And on one hand, we can go backward to the status quo of 2019, um, which, you know, we had a record wealth gap in Oregon. We had many people without health care and uh, housing that was bankrupting families, uh, an education system that had been underfunded for 30 years. Or we can rebuild a state in a more pro with a more progressive vision uh, and a vision that takes care of all the vulnerable people in our state uh, and creates a, a more equitable society. And, and that's the vision that I have for, for the Oregon I want to come out the other side of this crisis. Thank you. What, challenge, what challenges have been and will be created by the pandemic to the effective and efficient administration of Oregon state government? And how do you propose to meet those challenges? It's a great question. I think it's probably the most important question right now. Um, I think the reality is that this crisis is the equivalent of our generation's Great Depression. We are seeing unemployment rates higher than at any point since the Great Depression. The need in our state is incredibly high. You know, many of these people who have lost their jobs don't have, you know, you know robust savings accounts to weather this storm. So the need is going to be even higher. And at the same time, you know, we're going to get a revenue forecast in May that I imagine is gonna uh, paint a pretty dismal picture of the resources we have available. So what that means to me is we need to focus our resources on the most vulnerable people in our society, children, seniors, people with disabilities, and we need to focus on basic needs. Uh, all those folks who lost their jobs and had uh, healthcare coverage through their employer, we need to make sure that they still have healthcare coverage through the crisis and through the recovery. We need to make sure people aren't losing their homes because they can't afford to pay their rent or make their mortgage payments. That's only gonna prolong uh, the crisis and make the economic recovery take longer if people are losing their homes. Um, I also think we can't cut corners around education. We can't cut our budgets on the backs of kids. Um, so that's, that's how I'm thinking of the framing. We're gonna know a lot more when we get the revenue forecast in terms of how severe these cuts are gonna need to be. But really the name of the game is gonna be prioritization. We cannot do what President Trump is suggesting and you know, cut taxes on wealthy people or you know, spend a bunch of money bailing out big corporations. We really have to focus our resources on the citizens who need it most in our state. Great. Traditionally, the legislature has conducted a decennial redistricting process, which will occur, occur next year. Are you comfortable with the current redistricting process? And if not, how would you seek to change it? It's another good question. Uh, I personally am in favor of an independent redistricting process. I think uh, it's, it is not good in a democracy for elected officials to be choosing the people who vote for them rather than voters choosing their elected officials. And I think, you know, what we saw in the last couple of legislative sessions is a rapid increase in polarization and partisanship in Oregon politics, which was new here. It's been a problem at the national level for a long time, but it got really bad last session. And I think our top priority in terms of um, an insti the institution of the legislature is preserving our democracy and preserving faith in our democracy. And I think a really key step that we could take to do that is to make sure people are confident that our uh, redistricting process is fair um, and is based on facts and not based on politics. What are your thoughts on cap and trade proposals intended to mitigate climate change? Are they a good idea or not and why? I was a strong supporter of the clean energy jobs bill, which was a cap and trade cap and invest bill in the Oregon legislature. Um, I think, I believe climate change is probably the greatest ex existential threat that we face as a society. You know, I'm a member of a younger generation than most of the legislators. And I know that the impacts of climate change are happening now and they're only going to get worse as I grow older. And when I have kids and grandkids, they're going to be, they're going to be suffering if we don't take really significant action. I thought cap and invest was a great starting point. Um, and I was incredibly disappointed 
And to be honest, I was ashamed that the Republican legislators shut down the session over this bill and basically prevented our democracy from, func from functioning because they opposed this bill that was uh, intending to address climate change. Um, I also think that the bill, what it really does is it lays a groundwork for building our future economy. Um, you know, fossil fuels and, you know, burning coal, that's the old way of doing things. It's not going to be the future. Oregon has an opportunity to get ahead uh, of the rest of the country and invest in a clean energy infrastructure. And I really think the legislature needs to take steps to, to make that happen. And we shouldn't let obstructionist um, practices from uh, super minority parties prevent us from doing so. What is your view of the suggestion that the legislature suspend collecting the taxes that will fund the 2019 Student Success Act? Another good question. So uh, I work to help pass the Student Success Act and uh, I'm going to be very honest, I strongly oppose it. I strongly oppose the idea that we're going to stop this corporate tax um, or delay the corporate tax. Uh, and, and here's why. First, I was born the year after Measure 5 took effect. So for 30 years, my entire educational experience was, a, was an experience of cutting budgets and having teachers be laid off and cutting school days and reducing programming. And to suggest that we're going to get out of this crisis by, uh, by making the educational experience of current students worse, I think is really an unethical approach. And I believe that the way that this tax was structured is going to mitigate some of the concerns that people have. So for example, the tax only applies to corporations who are making over a million dollars in revenue. If, if a company is hurting and they start and they go below that threshold, they won't be paying the tax anymore. And the tax is only on revenue above a million dollars. So if you were making $3 million before, and then you, you go down because of the crisis and you're only making 2 million in revenue, uh, then your, your tax liability is gonna be cut in half. And it's a very tiny, you know, it's like 0.59% um, is what the tax rate is. Um, so, you know, I don't think we can delay it. And I think it's important to remember, what's this paying for? It's paying for nutrition services for kids. It's paying for equitable access to education for kids with the Black uh, Student Success Plan um, and other student success plans for historically underserved groups. It's dedicating funding towards mental health services for kids. These are all things that are gonna be in higher demand than ever uh, when, when school comes back, uh, hopefully in the fall or, or whenever we can bring our students back. So, you know, I'm very opposed to it. I think the Student Success Act is something we should be proud of as a state and we need to maintain the framework of it. Even if the revenue is gonna be less because of the crisis, we can't let the framework go away because it's just too important. Thank you, Ben. This has been the Video Voter's Guide. Thank you for watching. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and ballot measures and exercise your right to vote.